Welcome to Get Ready. I'm Greg Martin, and I'm just so excited to share with you stuff that is happening in our world today that the Bible has told us would happen in the days we live. And that's part of the miracle of scriptures that we hold dear to our hearts is it is prophetic about the days we're living in. And so uh, I just want to share some scriptures that are parallel and current events uh, that are happening as we get ready for the return of Christ, the rapture of the church. So today I want to talk about, the title of today's episode is Pestilence, Viruses, and New Diseases. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting as, as we touch on all these topics that Jesus said would happen in the last days, how current and how relevant they are. And as we just uh, have come recently through a global pandemic, COVID-19, uh, they're already talking about a new pandemic that is possibly emerging and keeping their eyes on it. But deadly viruses have been around for years and years and years, but it's kind of interesting. So as I list these viruses, and I'm only going back just uh, basically 100 years, but you can see the viruses are ramping up. Um, deadly viruses have been around. Uh, smallpox, black plague, okay, that's way back. But yellow fever, the Spanish flu in 1920, polio 1950, AIDS 1982, SARS in 03, swine flu in 09, cholera in 2010, typhoid fever in 2012, Ebola in 2014, and then COVID-19 in 2019, but now they're talking about this emerging smallpox and they're keeping an eye on it to what it may become, uh, if it's pandemic worthy or not. But um, there's just, the World Health Organization is constantly mar monitoring various diseases and their uh, effects and emergence. And they're really kind of, if you kind of read their stuff online, they, they have a um, kind of an urgency that this thing's there's a lot of things that could happen at any moment, you know, and so it's kind of like, okay, they're kind of uh, concerned. But science is struggling even, you know, just to keep up with uh, the infections and diseases that are already uh, happening and uh, to fight these things. But to make matters worse and complicated, old diseases are creating new variances that science has to keep up with and the prevention treatments that they've had that have known and true to work. Uh, it's, it's like these viruses have a mind of their own and they mutate into something else. And so science is constantly having to keep up with the advancement of treatments because of the mutation of of bacterias and stuff and it's like they got a mind and they can kind of figure okay we're not going to resist that anymore so we're going to try yeah, it's, it's just crazy you know it's, it's almost spiritual to be honest with you and um you know and maybe it is but uh with pandemics and um uh, all that you know we're living in a time where uh viruses can spread quicker than ever before in history we're living in a time where global travel uh, is, is just a reality. Um, you can literally be anywhere in the planet easily within 24 hours. Uh, human behavior is such as it is, uh, makes viruses uh, spread, trade, biological resistance, poor health cares, uh, social, political, and economic factors make spreading infectious disease uh, rapid like no other time in history. So let's go back to our text, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 7. And we've just been kind of picking apart this over the last few episodes of what Jesus said we can expect right before the rapture of the church. And so, uh, and before he returns, Matthew 24, 7, we've talked about this in previous ones, for a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, talked about that last episode, and pestilence. And I want to talk about that today. And then, so, so you know where we're going and earthquakes in various places. But let's talk about pestilences. And notice Jesus used the plural form of that word. It's also found in Luke 21, 11, but pestilence is a medical term meaning disease. And so Jesus used that diseases will be prevalent. Sicknesses will be prevalent in the days before his return. And so are we seeing that today? 
Yes, yes we are. And as a church, we need to be grounded in the healing scriptures uh, due to these airborne bacteria and viruses and all kinds of diseases. We need to know what the healing promises of God in scripture are to be protected. There's a lot going on in the area of bacteria and viruses, but today I just want to talk about one that seems to be gone under the radar and people aren't talking about it too much. And it's sexually transmitted infections or SDI, STIs. It's a fact that sexually transmitted disease are rising at alarming rates. Like uh, it's been likened to a forest fire that is burning out of control sexually transmitted infections, sexually transmitted diseases. And it's, I mean, as a believer in Jesus Christ and trying to live a moral and holy life uh, and seeing the current sexual climate of our day, it, to me, it's just like, I get it. It's, it's got a sexually transmitted disease have to be exploding like never before and and uh, you know these health organizations admit it when you do some research and so these uh, STDs SEIs are not just an American problem this is a global problem the sexual revolution has caused an explosion of sexually transmitted diseases in our modern history but for whatever reason uh, our public health organizations are not warning or talking too much about it. And uh, here's the deal. Uh, there are no known cures for many sexually transmitted diseases. Did you hear? Hello? Hello? There aren't any <laughs> known cures, many of them. Um, and there are medicines uh, via prescription that help manage or reduce the effects of outbreaks uh, from this sexual activity. There are over 30, and there's more to come, they say. There are over 30 sexually infectious diseases. Only four of them, four, are curable according to the World Health Organization. Think of that. That's amazing. Sexually transmitted diseases are still contagious and will spread from one sexual partner to the next sexual partner and so on and so forth. So can you say pandemic? I mean, with, with the sexual craze of our culture, uh, this is something that should be alarming people, but it doesn't seem to be a thing like they don't exist anymore, uh, but they do big time. HIV AIDS is not hardly mentioned. Like it doesn't exist. Like it's, you know, take a pill for that kind of a thing or whatever. Uh, but in the eighties and the nineties, it was, it was, uh, a big deal. Uh, but you know, they figured out where it came from and, uh, how it happens and, you know, protective measures and stuff. So it seems like people are, uh, just don't deal with it anymore, but it's not true. Uh, HIV, human immune, immune deficiency virus, is still one of the most serious pandemics in the world, killing multiplied millions, upward somewhere between 35 and 40 million people. There are an estimated 2 million HIV cases each year. The alarming fact is that nearly 40 million people are living hello, listen to this, are living with HIV and most don't even know it. They don't even know they're a carrier. Are you kidding me? That's a lot of people. In the United States of America, 40% don't that are infected with HIV don't know they are carriers. Wow, that's crazy. AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, is a result of HIV, and there is no medical cure for HIV or AIDS. This disease is transmitted through bodily fluids, uh, blood, semen, breast milk. Uh, it's crazy. And individuals come, become contagious within hours of contacting the virus. So uh, immoral sexual behavior uh, with somebody that's got the virus within within sometimes minutes to hours, the, the partner uh, may be infected with it. And, and then if, ah, 
the individual with HIV can li listen to this, can live upwards to 10 years without ever having any symptom that they have a virus. Hello, think of, think of, <laughs> think of that, of an active sexually person who spans 10 years, who unknowingly has HIV, has AIDS, and in their partner-to-partner -partner mentality that we have in the world today, they're unknowingly spreading AIDS. I mean, talk about playing Russian roulette. The Bible says sin may be fun for a season, but in the end, yeah, I think that plays here uh, with this. And to think of our culture who's, that celebrates sexual activity with whatever and whomever. Wow. Wow. The God of this world really is out to kill, steal, and destroy. There are treatments, not cures, that are costly and can slow the effects, but inevitably, death, this is a death sentence. And as long as people live unholy lives, using drugs with hypodermic needles, illicit sexual behavior outside of the confines of marriage, celibacy, uh, until God brings a person into your life, this problem will continue. Uh, our public school system promotes sexual activity as well as pop culture, music, movies, whatever. And we are living in a day where the experts think our elementary children need to know what their sexual orientation is. So in other words, uh, our educational system is really inviting them into sexual activity in a day when STDs are completely out of control. The opposite should be a policy to protect our young and vulnerable. Ages 13 to 24 are having regular, who are having regular sexual activity with multiple partners are uh, the, the main spreaders of sexually transmitted disease. There's no question of what spirit is influencing the decision policies of these educators. What is the result? Well, I can put it in one word, suffering, suffering. God is so gracious and wants to save us from the effects of sinful behaviors and heal our bodies with his mercy. I personally know of an individual who was diagnosed with HIV AIDS and uh, they repented, gave their heart to Christ and they are healed, live, live, living uh, many years with the healing power of God in their body uh, that reversed the HIV's diagnosis on their body. Praise God. See, we need to seek him. He loves people. He wants to save us. He wants to heal us. He wants to deliver us from ourselves and from the effects of sin. God has warned us to live self-controlled and not allow the flesh uh, to have anything and everything it wants. We are living in biblical times where there is a moral and spiritual deception. These are the times, the biblical times, Jesus said we would be living in. And the church, there are churches that teach God is okay with whatever sexuality orientation you're into, and, and it's just not true. Hello? And trying to be culturally relevant and politically correct, some churches and teachers have, are misleading and misguiding people. A different kind of gospel. God loves everyone. He loves everyone, no matter what sexual sin people might be involved in. God wants to save people. And this isn't about, you know, sending people to hell. This is about God wants to save you and get you to heaven and, and deliverance. But we must come to Jesus and repent from whatever sin and turn from that sin and follow Jesus and live a holy life. It totally makes sense how God has given us sexual guidelines to protect us from sexual plagues and diseases, to live a life free from, from that kind of stuff. So we're living in a time when pandemics is a, is a real word in our culture and in our home. Uh, 
Many organizations stand watch to monitor public health around the world. Health Protect Protection Agency, the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control. But as believers, we need to not fear. We need to live in obedience to God's word. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, powerful scripture. And said, if you diligently heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Wow, I love that. Our job is to follow the Lord. God is faithful to his word to deliver us and heal us. Psalms 91 is a powerful scripture, a portion of scripture. And let me just read some of these as it relates to pandemic plagues and all that. Psalms 91 verses one through six, he dwells in the secret place of the most high. That's where we need to belong. Shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence and he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks in darkness nor the destruction that lay waste at noonday and it goes on and on to talk about how the lord wants to protect us and deliver us we have a part to play we have to follow god's word we have to heed his word uh, not only uh, as we're talking about sexual diseases, but, you know, all the air, COVID, whatever. We need to follow the Lord and the inward witness of our life and obey the scriptures. We need to stay close to God in these last days. As we're getting ready for the return of the Lord, we need to stay close to God. We need to pray. We need to read our Bible. We need to be in fellowship with those of like precious faith, iron sharpening iron. We need to stay in church. Get in church. Hebrews tells us, uh, do not forsake the assembling of yourself as you see the day approaching. I don't know how much more clear it can be the day is approaching. So I do want to share one last thing. Oh, I'm taking a little more time, but a uh, historic thing just happened a day ago where Israel signed an agreement with uh, the European Union that they will now purchase uh, gas from Israeli, from Israel. In other words, they got cut off by Russia and they don't want to support Russia and their war with Ukraine. So they no longer are going to be purchasing fuel from Russia, but uh, they're going to just sign a deal to purchase fuel for the European Union to, uh, to keep oil in the homes, natural gas, to, to bring heat and all that. So historical thing has just taken place. And I think it's interesting because I believe that it is the hook in the mouth that will draw the bear from the north to make war with Israel. So we'll see, but it seems uh, like this is, this is the things that have been predicted so long ago. And we're seeing them historically right before our eyes. I'm telling you, the Lord is coming soon. So here's the deal. If Jesus is not your Savior, ask Him into your heart. If you have sin in your life, repent. Get free from sin. And remember to live like... We don't know the day or the hour He will return, but we need to live like it could happen today. But we need to live our lives like it could be 100 years out. But either way, we need to get ready. 